Welcome back to this Friday's episode of Sports Corner. I'm Cole Young, and believe it or not, it's already September, and this is the 75th edition of this segment. Time really does fly when you're talking about sports. To start, California has reason to celebrate because El Segundo is bringing home the Little League World Series championship title after a 6-5 victory over the team from Curacao on Sunday. ESPN broadcaster Carl Ravitch deserves some credit for this win. He provided an all-time announcer's jinx that secured the victory. With the score tied 5-5 in the sixth inning, Lewis Lappy stepped to the plate. Just before the 1-0 pitch was delivered, Ravitch mentioned, quote, Curacao has not allowed a home run in the World Series, end quote. Within five seconds of that statement, Lappy drilled a ball into deep left field for the victory. This was California's 24th appearance in the title game and eighth victory, which is the most of any U.S. team throughout the Little League World Series history. This past weekend was also week zero of college football, and while only two top 25 teams had games, it was still incredible to watch some live and meaningful football. Our local number six ranked USC kicked off their season against San Jose State, and Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams passed for 278 yards and four touchdowns. Highly touted true freshman Zachariah Branch made an electrifying debut with a 96-yard kickoff return and a 25-yard reception for touchdowns en route to USC's 56-28 victory Saturday night. While the Trojan defense looked spotty at times and gave up 28 points to the Spartans, their high-powered offense will carry them throughout this season. The other top 25 team we saw this weekend was the 13-ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish, taking on the Navy midshipmen in Dublin, Ireland. Transfer quarterback Sam Hartman threw four touchdowns for the Irish as they routed Navy 42-3. Another local team started their season off with a win this weekend as San Diego State opened the season with a 20-13 win over Ohio. Looking ahead to this weekend, this is officially week one of the college football season and there are some thrilling games on the schedule. For the noon schedule, I picked two must-see games. Ohio State at Indiana on Saturday at 12.30 on CBS and Boise State traveling to square off with historic rival University of Washington also on Saturday at 12.30 on ABC. Probably the best game of the weekend will come on Sunday at 4.30 p.m. on ABC, where number five ranked LSU will travel to face off with number eight Florida State. College football is very difficult to predict, so looking ahead to the future to pick a number one team is essentially impossible. I do think, despite losing a lot of talent to the draft this year, both Alabama and Georgia will continue to be two of the top teams across the FBS. We still have one more week to wait until the NFL season officially begins, and since I gave my full season preview last week, I won't dive too deep into detail, but the first game will be next Thursday, September 7th, when the Detroit Lions travel to Kansas City to challenge the reigning Super Bowl champion Chiefs. Since it's officially September of 2023, that means the world-famous Ryder Cup is just a few short weeks away. The Ryder Cup has become one of the world's greatest sporting events. Every two years since 1927, 24 of the best golfers from Europe and the United States go head-to-head -head in match play competition. Earlier this week, U.S. Captain Zach Johnson revealed the final six players on his 12-man team that will represent the United States against Europe. Johnson's six picks were Brooks Kepka, Jordan Spieth, Colin Morikawa, Justin Thomas, Ricky Fowler, and Sam Burns. The second half of the team, the six golfers who automatically qualified through the point system, consists of Scotty Scheffler, Wyndham Clark, Brian Harmon, Patrick Cantlay, Max Homa, and Xander Shoffley. The U.S. hasn't won the Ryder Cup on European soil since 1993, but over the 43 events that have happened in the Cup's history, the U.S. has 27 wins, Europe has 14, and they've tied twice. The Ryder Cup will take place September 29th through October 1st at Marco Simone Golf and Country Club near Rome, Italy. The MLB season is rapidly approaching its conclusion, and for most of our local teams, it's not looking good. I often feel like a broken record when talking about the Angels because they're stuck in a vicious cycle of starting seasons looking like a championship caliber team, then by the time September rolls around, their odds of making the playoffs have basically diminished to zero. Last week, it was announced Shohei Otani tore his UCL and would not pitch for the remainder of the season. We very well could have seen Otani pitch as an angel for the last time ever. Not only that, Mike Trout finally returned from the injured list, only to be put right back on the list after one game. The Angels are currently around 10 games out from the wildcard spot, and with just 28 games left, their odds of making the playoffs are hovering around zero. The Padres are still holding on to a very slight chance they could make it to the postseason. However, it is unlikely. And then, on the opposite side of the spectrum, there are the Dodgers, who will more than likely win their division, are in second place in the National League, the number three team overall, and have strong odds to make a championship appearance again this season. At least one of our SoCal teams will be representing us in the playoffs. 
The current World Series favorites are the Atlanta Braves and the Houston Astros, yet again. But the Dodgers, Rays, Orioles, Mariners, and the Minnesota Twins all have good odds to bring home a title as well. Between the late season baseball, the official start of college sports like football and soccer, plus golf and so much more, there are more than enough sports to indulge this weekend. Thank you for tuning in to Sports Corner over the past 75 episodes. I truly enjoy sitting here every Friday and bringing you sports coverage. I'm Cole Young. I'll see you for the next 75 and have a great Labor Day weekend.